Good morning, I'm John Ellsworth, founder of Success Strategies Incorporated and the creator of the Success Strategies Advantage. And I want to talk to you today about thinking about the year as we come to the toward the end of it. And I'll ask you one question. Was this the perfect storm? Was this the perfect storm? Consider the possibilities. We've had growing financial pressure of, if you're in a dairy operation, higher feed costs, lower milk prices, and other costs like labor, fuel, fertilizer, that frankly have just gone through the roof. Oh, and did I mention higher interest rates? This, you know, those being up five and a half percent at least over the last 18 months was a result of the Federal Reserve Board's uh, keen efforts to tame inflation. Oh, and what caused that? I think most of that was caused by unnecessary funding of dollars into the economy in an effort to turn things around. Uh, sometimes patience is a better, a better uh, avenue, if you will. And I think probably we didn't need to release the last $10 trillion. But having said that, it happened. We're faced with these higher costs and inflation. Um, so what to do? Well, there's several options as I see them. In fact, I think there's at least three. Number one, we could worry about it, but Mark Twain said that worrying is basically paying interest on a debt that you've never owned, that you've never owed. And I think probably that makes good sense. So let's skip that option. How about option number two? We could complain about it. Oh, that really works well. Teddy Roosevelt said complaining about a problem without proposing a solution is called whining. And I end my quote with that. I think that's a great thought. So let's skip worrying. Let's skip the complaining. What else can we do? How about we take action? Number one, decide what we want. What variable will we tackle first? You can only do one thing at a time probably. So figure out what's the highest priority item that we can tackle first. Second, define your goal clearly. And when I say clearly, I mean, nah, I want to make more money. That's not clear. That's an objective, but it is not a clear goal. A clear goal is I want to make five more pounds per cow per day. I want to net $100,000 a year in. I want to do, I want my feed cost to be down 75 cents per hundredweight from the previous year. Those things, those are clear goals. And then most importantly, set a date for its achievement. Now, will there be obstacles? Of course, but it is far better, far superior to identify these uh, obstacles ahead of time because you're, even in your subconscious mind, you'll be thinking about potential solutions, possible solutions. And next, you need to decide what steps we need to take. What's our first step? Uh, and bear in mind, there is never perfect information. There is no such scenario. We do not have perfect information. And so with that in mind, pick the best step, the best option that you can. And a couple of clarification points on that. Number one, you need to know who will lead the project. This is crucial. Otherwise, some everybody will think it's being done when in fact it probably isn't. So decide who will lead the project, who's going to help on it, and then what's the first action? And finally, move forward. Let me share with you a real client case. Uh, I have a client who has built a new freestall barn. Uh, it's almost completed. Uh, they needed more cows to fill that up because leaving it partially empty is like running an eight cylinder engine on five cylinders. It just didn't make sense. But the bank that he's with was reluctant to fund the new cows even though the loan to value with the new cows uh, presently and with the new cows being added was never over 60%, which is certainly within uh, lending, positive lending guidelines. The current loan to value is about 49% on the herd and to add cows and no herd debt would actually lower it to 40%, which is awesome. So we needed to come up with a solution. The solution we came up with was this, we offered the bank collateral of a 20 acre real estate parcel to get the additional money. 
This was not an issue. It was not an issue for this client. They already had a little bit of debt against it, so we will pay that off also. Uh, but the solution was to offer this 20-acre real estate parcel. So what happened? Number one, the bank was happy. The loan to value on the herd was lower. It's going to go down probably to 40%. And even more so as we add calves from these new cows we're bringing in. The client was happy because he got the cows that he needed. And I'm happy because number one, the cash flow will improve with these additional cows. The loan to value is okay. It's fine at 40%. That's great. It's better to be at 0% actually, uh, which we'll get there someday. Uh, and the positive thing from the cash flow perspective that I look, as I look at it, is he got a 20 year amortization on this real estate uh, supported loan as opposed to a seven year amortization on a herd loan. That does one great thing for cash flow. What a boost that was to the client's cash flow. It'll be great. Ultimately, having shared this story with you, the problem was solved. And the key was. Even though we were in a perfect storm that appeared to have no solution, there was an answer. I'm John Ellsworth, founder of Success Strategies Incorporated and the creator of the new Success Strategies Advantage software that you can find on our homepage at success-strategies.com. You can take a look at that and I wanna thank you for listening today. Thank you very much.